Hello and welcome to this little course on multi-way analysis. Uh, my name is Rasmus Bro from University of Copenhagen and we're going to do a number of videos here about multi-way analysis and in particular we're going to focus on parafag modeling and on parafag modeling in chemometrics. Before we start talking about the model though we have to talk about the data. Normally we're used to working with two-way data and if you have two-way data you have a matrix where in one mode you would typically have the samples and in the other mode you would typically have the variables. Inside the matrix you would have the actual values for example if you do spectroscopy you would have absorbances in here for example and that means that we are measuring absorbance as a function of two different things, as a function of samples and as a function of variables or wavelengths. Where well, we can easily extend data, because when we have freeway data, we simply measure as a function of one additional thing. So we might measure different samples as a function of samples. So we measure for different samples, we measure variables, for example, spectra and we measure spectra for example at different time points so for every one sample we would get a matrix of spectra measured across different uh, time points up here to the right you see another very common example uh, coming from fluorescence spectroscopy where every sample is a landscape of intensities measured as a function of excitation and emission we will get back to that so every element in a two-way matrix has two indices, the row number and the column number. For freeway data, we have row number, column number, and this is sometimes called the tube number. Here are just some examples on where we see uh, freeway data. For example, in sensory analysis, we would have different food samples, for example, and we would have, say, 20 different persons, assessors, assessing the food samples with respect to a number of attributes, uh, different sensory qualities. Or we could have process uh, data, we could have batch data. So every batch we follow over time for a number of different variables like pressure, flow, and temperature, etc. And as you can see in this list, there's a number of different uh, areas where we get freeway data. And in fact, we often have freeway data, but we forget that the data we do work with is free wave. Very often, we just initially transform the data into two-way data so that we can use it in our normal um, software. But very often, we are measuring, for example, spectra as a function of different treatments or as a function of different locations. And that could, in fact, be considered as a freeway data set. The traditional way of handling freeway data is to turn it into two-way data, which is a pity. Uh, but that can be done in different ways. Here's a small example. Here we have samples. And on all the samples, we have measured spectra. But we have done that at different pH values. So for example, we can take the spectra measured at the first pH value, and we can put them here. Then we take the spectra measured at the next pH value, and we can put those here. And in this way, we can get a long matrix of data where we have samples as a function of two things, wavelengths and pH. Now, of course, we can also unfold or matricize uh, as it's also called in this way keeping the pH mode intact or in a third way keeping the wavelength uh, mode intact. That's one complication with unfolding we can do it in different ways and the models we would get from analyzing these three different versions would be different. Quite often though it's simple uh, to figure out which uh, unfolding is the relevant one. One other problem we have with unfolding is that the number of variables will grow enormously. Imagine that we have 100 wavelengths and say 10 uh, pH values. So we have 110 variables. Well, when you unfold it, 
you would get 10 times 100, so you would get 1,000 variables. So imagine trying to understand how pH is actually affecting our system. You now have to look at 1,000 variables when there's only uh, 10 pH uh, distinct pH values. Um, that's a kind of indication of one of the biggest problems with unfolding, which is overfitting. The models are going to fit the noise much more uh, than, uh, keeping, than when you keep the data as a freeway data set. And we can do that. We can keep the data in a freeway uh, structure and build models on the freeway data directly. And we have extensions of our data, which is similar to, for example, PCA. PCA can be extended to freeway or multiway data. There are actually two ways of doing that, the Parafact model and the Tucker free model. And at, for now, we're mainly going to talk about the Parafact model. Another model that is very popular in chemometrics is PLS regression. Well, just like we have two-way PLS regression, we can do multi-way or multi-linear PLS regression. So we can actually keep the structure and work directly uh, on building models on freeway or uh, multi-way data. And we're going to see that that's an advantage to do so. So finally, in this first video, um, we're going to have a slight look at notation, uh, just uh, for convenience when you look into the literature. We talk about freeway data, but we also sometimes call those third-order tensors or free-mode arrays. In some areas of research, there's a difference between mode and way, but in chemometrics, we usually don't make any distinction uh, between freeway and free-mode data. The, the data sets can be split up in smaller entities by taking sub-matrices. We call these slabs or slices, and of course we can take them in different ways. We can take frontal slices, we can take horizontal slices, or we can take vertical slices. And we can unfold or matricize, and uh, that's what we have shown down here, is an unfolded freeway array.